Hi everyone, so we're on completing the square and if you've never done completing the square before or a bit rusty on it, this is really going to help you out. Completing the square is massively important. Um, and let's just clarify what we did in the previous video and with the discriminant and stuff. What do we mean by solving quadratics? We mean when we set y equal to zero, okay? So it does not, that quadratic does not always equal zero. It only equals zero when it crosses the x-axis, right? So here's the graph right in front of you. And you can see it crosses the x-axis here and here, and they don't look like nice numbers. Um, <clears throat> now, some people are really attached to this quadratic formula here and say, ah, oh, you know, I don't like completing the square. You know, students say that sometimes. But I think that's because they've been in an environment where they don't really recognize how important it is. I mean, completing the square actually made that formula, that quadratic formula. So to say you don't like it is, is kind of weird because it made the thing that you do like. Uh, and I, I hate the quadratic formula. I think it's, I think it's horrible. Uh, it's messy, it takes ages. Much prefer completing the square, okay? So let's talk about how to complete the square and how this works. So I've got x squared minus 4x take 2 equals 0 because I'm interested in finding the solutions where it crosses the x-axis. So I need this quadratic in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. You can see they're in order. So a must be 1, b must be minus 4, and c must be minus 2. Okay. How do we complete the square? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to put this in the form of brackets, squared. That's what it means by complete the square, because it's squaring a set of brackets, okay? And then we need to correct something. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find a bracket that when you square it, it makes x squared minus 4x minus 2 as close as possible, and then we need to correct. So I'm just going to say what it is. It's going to be x take 2. Okay, and the reason why, and this is the thing that people always do wrong, that x minus 2 all squared, they don't square it properly, that's because they don't write it in this form. So just write the two brackets next to each other and you'll see you get x squared, take 2x, take 2x, and minus 2 times minus 2 is plus 4. So you do get x squared, take 4x, plus 4. Okay, so what this set of brackets does here is it makes this bit correct. It gets the first two terms correct. Do you see? <clears throat> and at the moment, though, it gives you a plus 4. Right? But if we want just the... We just want the first two terms correct. The minus 2, we can deal with later. So the minus 2, I'm just going to stick there on the end. All right? So if I expanded this out at the moment and minus 2 from it, I would get minus 2 on this side, I'd get x squared minus 4x plus 2, which is not what I started with. That's not what I have here, do you see? So hopefully we recognize that we need to subtract 4, right, to make this work. Now this, this absolutely works, so minus 2 takes 6 equals 0. So how did I get that? What kind of approach have I made? And, and, you know, some people do set this as a formula, right? And the formula they set, and hopefully you can see, is that um, when we're completing the square, we're saying we get x plus b over 2. Remember, that's b, and that whole b is minus 4. Can you see? We get x plus minus 4 over 2. But in this case, b is negative, so that's fine. Squared. And then you see, did you see we took away, we took away b over 2 all squared? Because b over 2, remember that's minus 2. So minus 2 all squared is 4, but we're still subtracting it. And then, and that is it in completed the square form. Okay? And then we're taking away or adding uh, our c value. And our c value was that minus 2 here. Okay? So this is your completing the square formula, if you want to use that. 
So let's do this same example again and make that really clear. So x squared take 4x take 2 is 0. a is 1, b is minus 4, I can see that, and c is minus 2. So in completing the square form, I'm going to go x subtract, because that's a subtract. If it was plus, it would be plus, you see? <laughs> so b is minus 4, so I could look at it like this. x plus, b is minus 4, so minus 4 over 2 squared, subtract, big brackets, minus 4 over 2. Lots of people get that wrong. This always minus, isn't it? Because it's always taking away that extra element here. Minus times a minus always makes a plus. So we have to get rid of that. We have to get rid of that. Um, <coughs> squared plus c. So plus my minus 2, because here's my c here. Yeah, Equals 0. So I get x take 2 in the center squared minus, minus 4 over 2 is minus 2, squared is 4, minus 2 is 0. So I do get x take 2 squared minus 6 is 0. Now to actually solve the problem, I need to get x equals, remember. So I'm not going to square root everything first, because if I square root everything, I need to square root all the left and all the right. What you do first is get the numbers on one side and just leave it so x minus 2 all squares is, is the only thing by itself, okay? So plus 6 both sides, then you're going to square root both sides, but it's going to be hopefully you're familiar with this, plus or minus 6, root 6, because whenever you've got something to do with x and you're square rooting something, you're going to need that plus or minus. But you want x by itself, so you're going to add 2 to both sides, so 2 plus or minus root 6 is your solutions. And if you put those in your calculator, you will get these horrible numbers. So you get x equals, uh, what was this solution? x equals 2 plus root 6 must be this one. And x equals 2 minus root 6 must be this one. Okay, let's try that again with a few examples. Because this always gets, this can always trip people up, okay? So x squared minus 8x plus 1. So if we remember our, we can do it by the formula if we want. So x plus b by 2 squared minus b by 2 all squared plus c, right? So b is minus 8 and c is plus 1. So if we complete the square, just remember the theory here of why we're doing this. So I've got x plus b over 2. b is minus 8, so over 2 is minus 4. I wouldn't write minus 8 over 2 in every time. It just simplify it straight away. Minus b over 2 all squared. So b over 2 was minus 4. So minus 4 all squared. So whatever is in that, whatever is in this whole section, that goes in there with the big brackets. Okay? Plus c, so plus 1, equals 0. <coughs> so we get x take 4 all squared, subtract minus 4 all squared, so that's 16, so minus 16, notice it is always a minus, plus 1. So x take 4 all squared minus 15 equals 0. Okay, and just to reiterate again why we're doing this, why are we doing that? Because remember, x take 4 squared is the same as x take 4 times x take 4. When you multiply it out, you get x squared, you get minus 4x, you get minus 4x, minus 4 times minus 4 is plus 16. So you get x squared minus 8x plus 16. So you get those first two terms, you see? And then if you take the 16 away, you no longer have this plus 16 anymore. So you, you're just left with those first two terms in the question. And then you just add the 1 to correct it, okay? And then let's solve it. So again, we make x minus 4 squared by itself. We make that equal 15. Square root both sides, but don't forget the plus or minus. And then add the 4 at the end. Okay? And box your answers. Last one. <coughs> so let's do the same again. I hope, though, that we're recognizing why the formula works and where it comes from. So if we want to solve it, we mean when it equals 0, i.e. when this thing crosses the x-axis. That's the only situation it equals 0. So here I can see b is minus 5, and I can see that c is minus 2. 
So I'm saying x plus b over 2 and b is minus 5, so minus 5 over 2. Don't be scared of the fractions. Subtract b over 2 is minus 5 over 2. Everything goes in there. Minus 5 over 2, all squared. Plus c is our minus 2. So we get x minus 5 by 2, all squared. Subtract minus 5 over 2, all squared is 25 over 4, yeah? Subtract the 2 equals 0. So x minus 5 over 2 squared. Put these fractions together. Remember, we've done a lot of fractions work now, so this is the same as 2 over 1. Okay, we need the denominators to be the same, so if you times the top and bottom by 4, that's corrected it, so actually that's the same as 8 over 4. So minus 25 over 4 minus 8 over 4 equals 0. And that then gives you minus 33 over 4. And now you can finish this off. So again, make x the square bracket the subject by adding 33 over 4 both sides, square root both sides. But don't forget the plus or minus. And then add the 5 by 2 at the end. And notice that that's root 33 over root 4. It square roots everything. And root 4 is 2. Okay, hopefully that's helped.